Hello, everyone, and welcome to preparing for a data engineering interview. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, data warehouse design. This is kind of connected to our larger program we've, we're currently walking through right now, uh, which is going from raw data to machine learning models. Uh, we just wanted to kind of go over how to design a data warehouse uh, from a high level, specifically for uh, interviews. Um, many of you might be getting ready for data engineering interviews, and you might wonder, you know, what do you have to think about? So we thought this would be a helpful dual concept where we'll kind of go over designing a data warehouse as well as kind of talk about some things uh, you might have to deal with as an in interview as a data engineer. Uh, just a quick recap, for those of you who don't, maybe didn't watch the previous video, you can go back and watch that. Uh, what is a data warehouse? It's really just a centralized uh, data storage center uh, of sorts. It's usually in some sort of database. It could be Redshift, it could be Postgres, it could be, you know, Snowflake. Uh, and it typically will then be used from there to do things like create reports, uh, KPIs, answer ad hoc questions, maybe develop and sell products, et cetera. It usually represents a lot of transactional data from your business. So things like Salesforce uh, or your ERP uh, or your you know, e-commerce sites, et cetera, like all of that information will get centralized in one place and then you'll use that for analytical purposes. All right, with that, let's kind of go into data warehousing. All right, so let's talk about specifically how do you approach data modeling and data warehousing. Um, so especially if you're in an interview, the way I usually try to think about it is first you need to think about the entities. So when the interviewer or whoever it is, uh, you know, tells you to design a data warehouse, you first need to think about, okay, what are the, the concepts uh, in this data warehouse? Uh, we'll kind of go over an example here shortly, but you know, they might ask you to design a pro, uh, data warehouse for a college or a hotel management system or you know something like a rental system or something whatever it might be but you have to think about the different types of entities involved in that uh entities being like like people like cars like hotel rooms so so those are all sort of entities that are involved uh thinking about relationships are how are those things uh related uh we've kind of brought this up before but you know there's you have two major concepts uh as far as tables in a data warehouse which is fact tables and dimension tables and how do those all connect. Next, you also need to think about the questions you're gonna to wanna to answer. Uh, generally, when you're doing an interview especially, but also in general, there are specific questions the business wants to answer. Uh, and there are specific questions that the interviewer is gonna to wanna to ask you based off the data warehouse you design. Uh, usually they'll ask you to you know, select data from the data warehouse that you've just designed. And if you didn't design it correctly, it will be very difficult for you to answer the questions that they already have presupposed. Similarly, if you design a data warehouse for the actual business and it's not designed properly and your business comes at you with a question that you didn't think about, you won't be able to answer it possibly. So let's kind of go over one example. So I want to go over a real life example. Uh, in this case, I want to cover kind of like a DoorDash, Uber Eats kind of concept. So again, it could be any sort of food delivery app service because uh, there's a lot of different components in there. Um, so we're just going to kind of go over some of these things that you could think about, you know, when you think about DoorDash or Uber Eats or Postmates, you know, think about what are the entities, right? Like what are the entities you think about uh, in DoorDash? We're going to kind of go over them in the next slide, but take a moment to really think about, okay, what's involved in me ordering a thing from Uber Eats, right? Like a menu item or a food or something, um, something. Uh, just t take a moment to think about that whole workflow. All right, so now that we've gone through that, let's kind of look at some of the entities you could have thought of. So let's talk about some of the entities that you could think of possibly in those last few minutes. Um, so for example, you might have thought of obviously things like food and delivery drivers, right? Like those are two, I think, very obvious things in the workflow. You've got to have those as entities. Uh, you might have restaurants uh, or not might, you're going to need restaurants, you're gonna need customers, uh, locations as well. Uh, dates is kind of a default. So if you've worked in data warehousing long enough, you know, you generally have some sort of dimensional date table. Uh, promotions is another option. You know, you might want to include ads in there. Uh, another thing we didn't include here is, you know, actual transportation. So cars, uh, cars can get a little tricky though, right? Because uh, more than one person could end up using the same car. Um, and that might be something you would be interested in answering, but we didn't want to confuse too much in it now. That might be something we go on uh, in the future when we talk about uh, designing data warehouses, uh, you know, come in the future. Uh, all right, so that was kind of just this initial topic. There's also another complex concept like uh, add-ons. So you, we've got food, but on top of food, there's also the concept of add-ons. So, you know, just that guacamole or something, 
yes, you want to treat it like food, but you also, it's kind of its own uh, subgenre of entities in the sense that you would want to be able to answer questions. Like, remember, we talked about thinking about the questions you want to answer, which is, you know, trying to figure out which food products uh, maybe make the most in uh, add-ons or what's the, uh, you know, what types of products are mostly added on, et, et cetera. Uh, so that will require a little more complex data modeling. We're not going to go over that now. For now, these are just kind of the, the base layer we're going to go over. Um, I think we'll make a follow-up here where we kind of cover some of those more complex concepts like cars and add-ons. So let's start this off by just kind of approaching with a very simple star model. Um, so this might be the first initial concept you get out, right? Like it's really easy to put orders in the middle, right? Like orders is the fact. For those who don't remember, facts are just basically transactions. That's kind of obviously fitting in the center of this, right? Like the people are ordering things or ordering food, that's the fact table. Uh, and then you might be tempted just to put everything around it, right? Uh, so D users represents both drivers and users, like general users uh, or customers. Uh, we're using that generally because again, a driver might become a customer and a customer might become a driver and they might flip back and forth. So you might not want to separate that out because it will get things really messy in the future. But if you have that all kind of just in one table, it might make things easier. Again, it also depends on how complex you end up making the driver versus the customer and the information you collect on each of them. Um, but there is a problem here and you might not see it right away, right? Like you've, you've got all these D tables around. Uh, it seems pretty easy to join. You know, if you, again, if you're familiar with data warehousing, this seems, seems kind of safe. It seems like a good choice, but let's kind of go over where, where we've got at least one issue and, and maybe where uh, an interviewer uh, will probably poke you about it. Um, and hopefully they do, like you might put this as the initial design and hopefully then they kind of ask you some questions about, you know, hey, can you answer this? Can you answer a question about X, Y, Z? And you should hopefully realize that that's them hinting that you probably can't answer some sort of question. So let's kind of look at this. So if we look at this and we look at this from a data level, uh, specifically we're gonna look at menu items, restaurant and orders. Um, you'll notice that again, okay, so rest, you can tell what menu item and what restaurant it came through by looking at the orders tables. However, if we keep going, you'll notice that, you know, only one restaurant ID is in here uh, and really only one menu item. So for example, one of the issues you're gonna run into here is the only way you can tell which restaurant it's connected to which menu item is through the F orders table. So that means, for example, if a menu item is not ordered, if no one orders the Euro, you'll never know that the Euro is connected to maybe the Euro store or restaurant 11 or the ID 11, right? Like that's a huge miss. Uh, that that relationship you've basically cut out and you've lost information here. The only way you can gain it back is if someone happens to order it. Um, so you've made this very complicated. And again, like what if someone asks some questions like what menu items are not selling by restaurant? You can't answer that question, right? There's no way for you to answer that question. Um, you're not, you didn't connect restaurant to menu in any way. Uh, and now you have a problem. Similarly, you can't say what is the average price of a menu item by restaurant because you don't have, you don't know what menu items connected to what restaurant all the time because it only becomes clear when someone orders an item. Uh, this means if you want to like actually do research into what's not getting ordered, you can't, uh, which from a restaurant perspective, from an analytics perspective, I would argue is very important. You want to be able to answer those questions, especially if you want to sell maybe analytics back to a restaurant and say, hey, restaurant, we can tell you what items aren't selling well, maybe what items you need to do promos on. But in this case, you can't do that because you've cut out that information. So most likely what you're going to need to do in this case is just add, instead of a uh, ID directly to F orders, you're probably just gonna connect menu item to restaurant. So more, at the end of the day, like this is how it's going to, you're, you're kind of forced to do this, right? Like it, it can be tempting to connect to F orders, but at the same time, by doing that, again, you lose that relationship and, and relationships are in a way their own entity, right? Like that connection between the two items. And one could even argue there's even more of a complex relationship with the restaurant where, you know, there are certain restaurants that are owned by parent companies. Uh, and that could add a whole other layer of complication. But again, but if an interviewer doesn't bring up points like that, I wouldn't try to press it too much because there's a ton of things you can add in here. There's a ton of other ways you could really think it through this design that you might not want to bring up uh, in an interview. You kind of want to get the bare minimum out there, think high level, um, only write the entities that you think you'll need and the relationships you think you'll need. Because again, after this, what they're basically gonna do, if we keep going, is they're just gonna ask you some questions. Um, 
when you're interviewing and they're going to, you're basically going to have to write some SQL typically to answer them. So for example, I might ask you, you know, which users are likely to purchase a meal daily. And that's something you can answer, right? Uh, you have users connected to the fact table. Uh, you can select that pretty easily. And then you just need to figure out if it's, you know, every day you can do that, you know, based on, you know, maybe there's a, a certain rolling window that they want to figure it out. Um, you know, there's a different, there's different ways you could slice and dice that. They could also ask what is the average amount of times a user purchases a meal in seven days. Again, pretty obvious. Uh, what promotions are most likely to increase sales? Again, you've got promotions connected to sales. Um, and now here's one other point where you can't actually answer some a concept, which is, are there enough available drivers per hour? Um, so something we didn't consider here is creating some sort of availability table. Uh, this could be, we're not going to go too deep into it. It's just, again, another concept that you might have to think about, right? Uh, if they were to ask you a question, are there enough available drivers per hour? Do you have that data connected? And if we look back kind of at our model, there's nothing here that really tracks availability. Uh, but that's another concept that you would have to consider if, again, an in, in interview asked it. Uh, if it's not, then hopefully, you know, you're lucky and you don't have to answer it. But again, I'm just trying to get you to think about uh, from an interviewing standpoint, what could get asked, uh, what you should be ready for, and what you should think through in, in as far as relationships and entities and how you should approach this problem. All right. And with that, uh, I want to say thank you. We're going to kind of go into a few more in-depth uh, videos where we talk, I think, a little more about like the late changing dimensions um, and designing things, some of those more complex concepts, uh, like dealing with cars and drivers and users, um, as well as add-ons, which add its own complexity to uh, the whole model concept. Because again, add-ons have this weird thing where they're both a sub item as well as an actual item at the same time. And we can talk about that more uh, in the future. But thanks so much for joining us this time. Uh, we hope to make some more videos shortly. Uh, and we really do appreciate all your views. So thank you and goodbye.